Hi, Scott here from Outdoor Adventure Films. In this Q&A, I answer questions from you viewers, so stick around. So let's jump right in. So Joshua asks, how would you compare the Rook suspension to the AG series? And he's referring to the Atmos, the Osprey Rook versus the Osprey Atmos AG series. And now uh, I have not hiked with the Atmos AG. I've only hiked with the Rook. I have tried on a uh, friend's Atmos pack uh, for a short period of time, but I never actually hiked with it. So I can't give a real good comparison. However, the suspension systems are pretty similar. From the research I did, they, they, there's some slight differences and the Atmos series is supposed to have a slightly better suspension system. And actually viewer Buggy wrote in and said that he has both. He has the Rook and the Atmos AG and he likes that Atmos AG for a little bit heavier carries because of that suspension system and also for extra space, he says if he's going to be carrying 62 to 68 liters he's going to go with the atmos ag 65 liter so how do you put 62 to 68 liters in a 65 liter pack that's where those outside pack uh outside pockets come in and you can probably go uh just a little over that 65 liter with that uh, I was trying to keep my weight down this year on the JMT, so I went with the 65 liter Rook because that's a pound lighter and $100 less. And I did a full review on that just recently. If you didn't see it, I'm gonna put it right there. And uh, I go into a lot more detail on the Rook and uh, some comparisons with the Atmos and also some of the ultralight alternatives that uh, I think it's, it's fairly comparable to. So next, Marianne watched my Tahoe Rim Trail uh, video, which I'm gonna put right there. And she asks, uh, were you post holing much? So if you didn't watch that one, I was walking through the snow and I decided to go without snowshoes. So I considered renting snowshoes, but it got to be last minute and I saw the price tag on them and I just decided, you know what? Everything else I'm bringing on this trip is, is none of it is snow not designed for camping in snow. It's pretty much three season gear and I just kind of beefed it up with extra layers on my clothing, extra layers with my sleep system. So why not just give this a try without snowshoes? And I had a great time, but was I post holing? Absolutely, I was post holing the whole time. And if you're not familiar with that term, that means basically stepping and sinking down into the snow. And in a couple spots, I sunk into my thighs, but um, most places I didn't. Most places just a, a short uh, post holing into my, maybe my shins. But then I found other areas where I could see a snowmobile had gone through or something like that. And I could walk on that as a little more packed and I wasn't post holing at all. So it, it, was, it was a little mix uh, of, of some post holing and some not. All right, next, Larry watched my Red Rock Canyon Vegas day hike video. I'll put that one right here. And he asks, where do you find these hikes? He says, they are so close, but seem so far away. And I think what he means is, you know, some of these hikes, they're close to major cities, but they seem, they look so wild. Um, you know, you're actually out in nature. You don't have to go far. And that's true. I think if you just do a little research where I find these hikes is I'm usually just honestly looking on Google and finding the hike. And then I go a step further and I'll watch YouTube videos from other uh, hikers that have posted and just see if it looks like a hike that I want to do. If it looks something appealing to me and that's how I choose my hikes. And then I go even further and watch more videos on that hike to, to do some more in-depth research on the, the terrain, typical weather, that kind of thing, as well as uh, reading uh, descriptions, trail descriptions, looking at maps, that kind of thing. All right, this one's a little different. This is actually kind of a reverse q and I did a short section hike on the PCT up in Northern Oregon a couple years ago and put together a slideshow of it. I hadn't started making any video of, of any of my hikes yet, so I just had pictures, but I put together a slideshow with some narration and music. It's right there. And in it, there's a large slug and I asked the Oregon folks, what kind of slug is this? What species? I was thinking maybe it's a banana slug, but I wasn't so sure. 
And it was Susan that replied and confirmed, yes, that was a banana slug. So if you watch my video and you see the slug, that's what it is, a banana slug. Thank you to those of you who wrote in some questions, and I hope I answered them and hopefully helped some of the rest of you as well. As always, if you found this video useful, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.